Hello there friends, it's Shenanigoon, and this time I've truly lost my mind. I've gone back to the 2005 Star Wars Battlefront 2 game, and I have dedicated myself to beat in the Galactic War mode as a rebel sniper without a single death. Not any. I'm gonna tell you right now, I, I admit, I failed this challenge at least 50 times, as those stormtroopers must have signed up for classes at the range because boy, do they love to hit their shots, but just really randomly when they do. As a sniper, I have slightly less health, so it's quite e easy, even at a range, to go down quickly and unexpectedly. I had a powerful sniper, a good pistol, and most of all, I'm just a slight bit smarter than the AI in this game. Just a little, at least. So here's the galactic challenge that I actually managed to win without dying once as a rebel sniper. I really hope you guys enjoy. Felucia is the very first planet the rebellion sets their eyes on. Nothing quite like a planet full of a bunch of plants and animals that are desperate to kill you. Home sweet home, right? Just maybe no one should have this planet. Well, Dolores would make her way down this giant world tree, getting quick resistance almost immediately at the bottom. We nearly got to mark this rundown as a failure right away, because I had trouble telling where the first stormtrooper was, and a couple of his shots almost ended poor Dolores right then and there. Thankfully, the hill that was blocking my view also blocked his, and I was able to survive the fight, heal up on a medical droid that I'm undoubtedly giving my firstborn to, and snipe the stormtroopers that really wanted this medical droid for themselves. The auto turret, who I named Otto, O-T-T-O, -T -T proved to be one of my main assets as it both distracted Stormtrooper fire, but it was also the close, closest Dolores had to a spidey sense as it would often notice encroaching enemies before I did. I took the command post that was providing the enemies with an ATST, then from that hill, Dolores made her way to the next nearest command post, moving through poisonous gas, which, poisonous gas guys, is this not a sign that maybe we should not be taking this planet at all? and fighting a good deal of stormtroopers. I fought down there for a while before nearly running out of ammo, so Dolores had to hoof it back to the hill I had taken out earlier and nearly died on the way back. I made it and then proceeded to snipe all Imperials that decided to charge the hill. Though because of the fog, I may or may not have killed a couple of my own men. Who's to say? That whittled them down to next to nothing and then Dolores chose to definitely not play fair by grabbing a tank and mowed down the rest of the stormtroopers, bringing Felucia into the rebellion with 35 credited kills and 54 points for Dolores, who I of course decided to name Snipey, or Snippy, I suppose it could be either one. I think both are fitting. After saving the battle under what I'd consider a very appropriate name, I watched in confused gratitude as the Empire decided to move further into their own territory instead of moving on any of mine. I have to assume there was something really, really cool out there, and the Rebellion sadly missed out on it. In order to make up for that sorrow, my fleet moved on Kashyyyk because we didn't want to disappoint the ghost of Kiati Mundi. Trust me, he would never shut up if we didn't help the Wookiees, even though we had to explain to him it wasn't a droid attack this time. He really didn't get that concept. Dolores spawned on the high ground, which as everyone knows is the best place for both snipers and Obi-Wan. From there, I was able to pluck off some of the charging troopers and then use the nearby giant turret to destroy a tank, but I only destroyed once, because I'm no fool. Dolores knew the enemy would not miss forever and got out rather than risk going kablooey. Good thing I did, because very shortly after, Araka took out the turret. So uh, Dolores immediately did what she needed to do and avenged the turret. I then promptly ran out of ammo and was forced to leave my precious high ground for more. I'm nearly certain I heard the ghost of Obi-Wan weep as I did so. Found even higher ground than before and got to work running out of ammo. I repeated this cycle a after running out again, then once only 28 amps remained, I decided to play stupid and leave safety in order to take the command post. Dolores is easily distracted though and decided to start shooting at stormtroopers who are merely trying to have a nice day at the beach. They don't take kindly to that and a tank nearly ends poor Dolores' life here again. Thankfully, a nearby medical droid hollers to me and I rush to hear its wise words which bring me back to full health. I ran out of ammo at this point, and instead of being smart and retreating safely for ammo while the Wookiees do all the work, I decide to charge the command post guarded by the prior offending tank, with just my pistol and some grenades. Thankfully, my plot armor carries me through, and I'm able to use the rocks to hide and the grenades to blow up the tank and finish taking the planet at 57 kills and 73 points. At this point, Keati Mundi's ghost cried tears of joy and then faded away at having seen his greatest dream come true. The Imperials finally realized a war was going on and decided to come check it out by attacking the damn place I just worked so hard to take. Mundi immediately showed up again and in fear of his rant, the Rebellion quickly got back to work defending the Wookiees. I followed the strange strategy as before. While on the higher ground this time though, I took a glancing strike to the head that nearly ended poor Dolores. Thankfully, these Rebel helmets are both functional and stylish. I maintained my post up there till nearly the end when I went down and what looked to be a strike from Kiati Mundi himself wiped out the last remaining tank. This time, I only managed to get 41 kills and 46 points. 
I rushed my Guido this time because it's where Kiati was slain, and I figured it might get him off our backs if we freed the planet. The troopers became strangely very obsessed over the big turrets, and I almost felt bad how singularly focused they were on just getting to ride in them. Almost is the key word, though, as Dolores continued to snipe them. Dolores then spent a long time sniping all the stormtroopers trying to cross the bridge because all refused to pay the toll, before realizing the enemy had snuck around and stolen the command post behind me. At this point, I finally had unlocked the rewards, which didn't mean I was impossible to kill, but it did make my job considerably easier, as I could now one-shot the troopers with my sniper, regardless of where I hit them. I could finally be rewarded for being a truly awful shot. Yippee! I really needed this as it performed small raids on the command post they had captured, fighting off trooper after trooper, some of which were honestly just minding their own business. I, I might not be the good guy here, frankly. The last two enemies were killed by my team, and my Guido belonged to the Rebellion, with 47 kills and 61 points for Dolores. Hopefully, there was a secret 48th kill that was Kiati's soul being put to rest too. Well, after all these victories, the Empire decided to strike back at Hoth where they really set their sights on killing poor Dolores. I used a nearby radar dish to take out their turrets, then helped pick off troopers facing off against my fellow confused rebels on a nearby hill. An ATAST was on a nice stroll, and Dolores wasn't having any of that, so I quickly used the radar dish to remove it. I defended that position for a while before a second one came along angry about the death of its friend. I felt bad and decided to send it to join its buddy. I then sniped another trooper. Normally, this would be unremarkable, except for the fact that apparently this trooper was very important to the uh, massive ATAT walking nearby. It decided that this one lonely sniper deserved to be the singular focus for its cannons. Thankfully, the tears over his fallen friend must have made it really hard to see, because it missed every shot, and merely made Dolores seem very cool as she ran between the blasts to safety. I sniped for a while from cover and was nearly given ammo, but apparently the smuggler thought I smiled off or something, because he decided to give me nothing. An enemy radar dish nearly kills me at this point, and Dolores decided the best thing would be to go explore some tunnels before coming back and sending many more stormtroopers to be Wampa lunch. I wrapped the Battle of Hoth up by recapturing the Hoth hangar and letting the timer run out after watching ATSD just stare into the void, then trying to force my way into the Millennium Falcon, as I do believe Dolores definitely deserves a spot on A team. Hoth is a total of 66 kills and 78 points. At this point, the Rebellion takes a long look at the script to Return of the Jedi and says, Screw it! Designed to attack Endor way earlier in the war, Dolores learns from the Ewoks, and other than developing an infatuation with C-3PO, I use a hollowed out tree to wage war on the troopers. By this time, the Empire has invested in snipers of their own, and I get lucky when a bolt misses me by inches. Then the very same thing happens again very shortly after. I have to assume I either owe C-3PO or Kiati Mundi for my continued existence. The Ewoks' bloodlust rubs off a little too much on Dolores, and I chose to rush off into battle, nearly getting myself killed. But thankfully, I'm able to hightail it back to my sweet love, the medical droid, who whispers sweet nothings to me, bringing me back to full health. I use my improved blaster pistol to pick off some more troopers, and the fight for Endure comes to, came to a close as Dolores took a walk with the murderous teddy bears. The combination of Ewok killing everyone first and the impressive ATST numbers meant I was only able to manage 27 kills and 37 points here. At this point, I had a defensive fleet over Dagobah because I don't want anyone on my swamp. The Empire, though, is having none of that and begins a space battle with me. So, Anne has to go someone who's not Dolores for once as she doesn't know how to swim and so avoids ships. My little pilot friend here is named Duke Skydocker, and he's such a good pilot, honestly, I don't, won't even go into explaining the space battle. I basically just use a Y-Wing bomber to endlessly bomb the enemy capital ship till it go boom. I wasn't ever really in danger. Space is cool, but super easy. Duke flew away with only three kills, but 142 points. Dolores wants an education at this time, and I hear while the archives may be incomplete, Coruscant has the only library I know of, so the Rebellion books it there. Unfortunately, I'm terrible at sharing, so I chuck some grenades at the troopers pouring in the library and then begin making a slow pace forward through them. I rush back and forth between the library and the beacon room, often leaving behind Otto to give the troopers a friend. I finally manage to take their starting command post after many attacks and move from there to wipe out the last of the troopers in the temple. The Jedi Temple is finally in Rebels' hands at 39 kills and 59 points for Dolores. Unfortunately, she wouldn't get a chance to read anything due to the fact that for the third frickin' time, Kashyyyk was under attack. They had three choices, including the capital planet of their own empire. But nope, the Wookiees really had this coming, I guess. I'm starting to think Kiati Moody had a point. These Wookiees really did need our help. The same strategy as before worked more than well, though this time I had to be on the lookout for enemy snipers who could easily one-shot me. Thankfully, they all must have terrible focus because I'd often find them just standing there, staring off into the void. I quickly sent them to said void, since they liked it so very much. Having the increase in damage also made this the easiest battle of all for Dolores, and after scaring a trooper out of his tank, I put an end to the attack on the Wookiees for the third, and hopefully, final time. 45 kills and 51 points this time around.
In order to keep the Imperials from attacking Kashyyyk yet again, the Rebellion launches an attack on Naboo. Dolores would mostly stay at the spawn point for a while, sniping and then using the pistol in order to finish off enemies, gaining pistol kills in order for me to quickly gain the reward pistol again. I nearly died trying to protect a newly acquired command post, but thankfully the trooper attacking was almost dead when we started our little gunfight. I rushed to the next command post which provided the imps with their tanks, though for whatever reason they would always only take one tank and ignore the second one. I have to assume it's because they wanted to fight mostly fair. I, on the other hand, had no such worries, and so jumped into the ignored tank and killed a couple Imperials, plus blew up the other tank in battle. I got slightly too confident though, which it seems to happen a lot, and several grenades on my tank worried me enough to abandon it. Unfortunately, I mistimed my escape in my rush, and one of the grenades nearly cost me my life. Through sheer luck and a mad dash, slash a lot of jumping, for safety, I was able to find my way to Bacta, then a medical droid. As I healed, I attempted to snipe stormtroopers a good distance away. Right then, a green bolt flashed by my scope, showing I was the definite target of an enemy sniper, who was about as good as me. Which is to say, not very good. I hid, trying to find him, but then decided to try and my way, uh, make my way around to where I believe the shot came from. I failed to find the sniper, but I did manage to take a command post. At this point, I wondered, was Darth Jar Jar himself trying to have me killed? But shortly after that, in the main square, another close call happened. I attempted to dispatch the attacking sniper, but it turns out I'm an awful shot. Once I had reloaded and looked for him, he had vanished. Some may assume he died, but I theorized that it was definitely Dark Jar Jar who retreated to kill me some other time. From there, the last trooper was killed by my fellow rebels, and Abu was free with 36 kills and 57 points. It seems, at this point, the Empire decided they really wanted my swamp, so I had to rush back to Dagobah to defend it in space yet again. This time, Duke was a bit more proactive in shooting down enemy fighters, and I easily won the battle again. At 15 kills and 150 points, my swamp was safe. I then proceeded to attack Tatooine, because I heard Vader hated sand, and I just thought, if I collected all the sand, maybe we could, like, throw it at him or something. Seemed perfectly plausible to me. I got in a firefight, trying to capture an enemy command post, and strangely, despite being surrounded by three rebels, the stormtrooper seemed to pretend to hide till his death. That's gonna haunt poor Dolores a bit. It seemed like it bordered on war crime. Oh, welly. I watched as my teammates proved to me that they have deep-seated aggression issues, though. I then fought a very confused trooper who was utterly, utterly fascinated by the architecture of one sandy house. I'm starting to get why Anakin hates sand. All his men get very confused when surrounded by it. Using my improved pistol, I was able to storm two command posts, killing all the guards at them. I was prepared to snipe the final guy, but a wonderful Wookiee decided to get revenge for his planet getting attacked so much and finished the battle for us. 45 kills, and 73 points later, Tatooine, in all its glorious sand, was ours. Well, no matter how many times I made it clear it's my swamp, the Empire desperately wanted it, and they sent yet another fleet to try and take it. Our deep love for Yoda means we refuse to move our blockade, so another space battle breaks out. Once again, it's nice and easy, gaining 6 more kills and 115 points for me. And what do I get paid for beating them so soundly? I get attacked in space right away again as I move towards their last planets. I got a lot more obsessed with fighter kills though. Still, was never in danger really and I managed to kill 20 enemies and get 136 points. I finally reached Utapau and began to pow my way through. I had a clear view of the enemy's main spawn point nearly immediately and it became quite simple to rack up kills, especially focusing on any snipers I saw to ensure Dolores' safety. When I moved closer because I'm an impatient idiot, I nearly got killed by an engineer with a shotgun. Thankfully, I understood quickly why he was carrying said shotgun with such a widespread because he had awful aim, even worse than my own, which, honestly, that's surprising. Not that I'm complaining. My beautiful medical droid is destroyed senseless senselessly at this point by my own fellow sniper with a very poorly thrown grenade. Utapau was soon over, though, and Dolores walked away with 31 kills and 36 points. I would spend the next three weeks mourning the death of my medical droid. At this point, the Empire makes yet another strike on Hoth. I follow mostly the same strategy of destroying their turrets and picking off their men on the hill, but unfortunately one shot misses and strikes the AT-AT. It was having none of that despite the shot doing next to zero damage and begins firing on me, but thankfully it has the same attention capacity as me and quickly loses interest. I attempted to move forward on the command post, but I ran out of ammo. I hop my way to safety and have to hold off an enemy charge by using the cover of my radar dish. I feel a little bad for killing an engineer who is merely holding a repair tool and just wanted to ride at the turret. That one's gonna haunt me. I once again attack the command post over the hill and experience the odd shame of being fired at by an ATST that refuses to even look at me and walks on as though it hadn't just tried to kill me. I honestly don't know if it, it was or I was more ashamed of that. Turns out while Dolores was busy murdering their men, an engineer had bothered to fix the turrets I had earlier destroyed. Enraged by this, Dolores promptly blew them all up again. I race to the next command post, all the while dodging ATST fire once again proving two things. Hoth has some very cool movie moments. 
and those walkers really have trouble hitting their mark. I storm and kill the troopers and turrets at both command posts, then make my way to a radar dish and shoot the ATAT -AT in the butt, in the neck, a bunch till it gets annoyed enough that I achieve victory at 55 kills and 72 points. Well everyone, we're in the end game now, with just two planets left belonging to the Empire. Now that Hoth has once again defended, it's time to go to its polar opposite and attack Mustafar. Mustafar had a habit of giving me trouble quite a bit in other runs thanks to the tight corridors and I don't even know why, but the Stormtrooper's aim was remarkably good here. I guess they send the best of the best to just hang out on a lava planet. Maybe the dark side just loves this planet, I don't know. I refuse to lose so close to victory this time though and I have to stay on the side of caution. Dolores would fight through the lava bridge then down to under the platform fighting off Stormtroopers all the way. Taking the second command post was dangerous as more reinforcements could easily pop in right on top of me with zero cover and while I nearly went down to one I was able to kill him first, heal up and take the command post. At this point I forget that I intended to be cautious during this fight and get in a heated battle on the stairs with multiple enemies. Thankfully my stupidity isn't immediately punished but I come super close to death thanks to two back to back shots hitting me. My motivational speaker medical droid gives me a pep talk and I feel good as new then begin using my newly acquired improved pistol to mow down my enemies. The Imperials have only one command post so it's packed with imps. I'm able to kill a good deal of them but I nearly die thrice. After watching a trooper take a dive in the lava, I decide it's a good time to go get some health. I go back for another fight after and immediately almost die yet again. Those shock troopers are surprisingly good shots with their pistols. I'm able to find Bacta found on the ground, which I don't recommend taking medicine that you find just laying on the ground, but thankfully it worked out for Dolores. And finish off the last of Mustafar's regiment. 43 kills and 77 points, Mustafar's ours. Having one planet left, the Ems decide to head my way. Frankly, I don't like space battles, but it's my only way to get to Polis Massa, the last place they have. So I attacked them in space. I got hit hard a couple times this time around actually, but overall it was once again an easy win. Having the ability to automatically heal my ship over a short period makes these encounters very simple if you just use their own capital ship for cover. For whatever reason, they don't want to shoot it. I won this one at 20 kills and 104 points. For whatever reason, the Empire refused to let me just invade Polis Massa, so they attacked my fleet once again in space for one final assault. 15 kills and 122 points later, the last resistance of the Empire was wiped out and I was on my way to their final planet. This is it. The final battle. Perhaps I should have ensured Endor was the final fight for something more climatic, but it seems fitting in a way that this little peanut would be where the Empire makes their final stand. Polis Massa is not a sniper's dream at all. Tight corridors and little distance put the favor on the troopers and the shotgunners. Plus, this map was a grenade crazy map, despite the fact that if the walls could actually break in this game, we'd all be sucked down into space and our deaths. Most of the grenades love to kill one's own side too. Dolores let her team surge forward because in lives past, this team had a habit of shoving her forward whether she wanted to or not, right into blaster fire and grenades. I then advanced to a side room where I'd pop out to conduct raids on the incoming troopers and then retreat to hang out with the boys again. Dolores may be a legend at this point, but she's not about to do anything too risky to get herself killed so close to the war's end, so this tactic is key to success. All the grenades flying through the air also strongly suggest not getting too close. At this point, I'm absolutely in love with the reward pistol and am able to use it to take out the very dangerous shotgunners and other advancing troops. Thankfully, they learned everything they know from the Arkham games and are attacking me one at a time mostly instead of using their overwhelming numbers. Though, I don't blame them with how many grenades wipe out groups in this map. With only 9 guys left, I lost half of my health duking it out. I hang out with the boys one final time, wish them well, and head to end the war. I find a bunch of snipers hiding out in the hangar at the end of the map instead of actually doing anything. Dolores says no prisoners, but I lose a few as they hop in a tank and instead of turning on me, they flee the scene. Which, honestly, was likely wise. No new tank spawns and Dolores is forced to watch the end of the war come to, come to be as she captures the final command post and the tanks outside fight each other till the last Imperial's dead. My cautious approach only yielded 27 kills and 40 points here, but I was fine with that with how dangerous the fighting was, I certainly was about to lose my run on the final one. Dolores had survived the war. Her kill count stands at 673 kills, 1,583 points, and obviously zero deaths. Well there we go! Thank you for watching everyone, I really enjoyed this challenge even if it drove me even more insane. I'm always looking to do more challenges and shenanigans. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to give it a like as that helps a lot. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this as I switch between these kind of challenges and random shenanigans and sanity all the time. Have an amazing day friends, 